Welcome to episode 51 of Meet the Gap. My name is Rolf Steinort and I'm recording this in Bremen, Northern Germany. Next week, uh, this time, that's uh, Sunday, when I'm recording this, Sunday evening, I'll be in Croatia at the Slobotny Festival, the second Slobotny Festival. And as far as I found out about the Croatian language, Slobotny means freedom or free. So this is a festival about a free software um, conference uh, starting on Friday about uh, free software and business and a festival with uh, a lot of attractions. Um, I am one of them uh, on Saturday and Sunday. I will give uh, a live performance of recording Meet the Gimp and I need some questions for that. So, if you have a question or an example image, um, just uh, either write a comment in the blog meetthegimp.org or go to uh, write me an email at info at meetthegimp.org. Um, surprise questions with uh, surprise images are handled a bit better if uh, you know them beforehand. And if you're coming to the festival, well, bring your image uh, to the festival and we'll take a look there. I found an interesting website, seems to be pretty new, uh, the Linux Darkroom. And here Matt is collecting everything about uh, programs uh, that you can use for photo manipulation in Linux. The uh, URL, the address is linuxdarkroom.com without dashes and so on, just linuxdarkroom.com. There will be a link in the show notes. And now for a little bit of a geography lesson. I had to look up where Belize is. Uh, well, at first I thought Africa, but uh, it's not Africa, it's Middle America here, just uh, next to Nicaragua and uh, south of uh, Mexico. So I got an image and a letter from Belize. Oh, uh, well, Belize is very small, I saw here. They have uh, 300,000 uh, inhabitants and, uh, well, it's smaller than my town here. But, uh, well, it looks quite nice. And I got an image from there. And here it is. Bill sent me this shot here. And it is made with a compact camera. And uh, you see, it must be pretty hot and uh, it is pretty bright there. And of course, people keep in the shadows. And so uh, the subject of his photo, the woman standing here at the rail, is at, at the railing, is in the shadow. These harsh contrasts are quite a challenge for digital cameras. The best thing here would have been either to meet her uh, directly from uh, uh, the skin of the woman, um, but then you get a blown out background. You see uh, this white here, it's nearly 100% and if you uh, just increase uh, uh, the, the exposure a bit, it will blow out and so will all the other uh, parts of the image. So this is not the real option. Next possibility would be fill flash. And uh, that would have been nice here. Just activate this, the flash if you are working in such conditions here and uh, fill up uh, the, the light here. 
Um, another possibility is um, don't shoot images that aren't here. Uh, that's uh, a very wise advice from John Arnold from photowalkthrough.com. Uh, this image here, well, it isn't here. Uh, I will uh, go really into the shadow and uh, take the image in the shadow or uh, make a different image out of it, an image that is there and that could be, for example, um, a silhouette. Just go a little bit round here and get the profile right uh, and uh, look for the background so that you don't have interference here with these railings here or so and just shoot a profile uh, sorry a silhouette and that would look nice but now let's look if we can save this shot the first thing uh, would be to try some curves let's do that here you see here we have uh, two big lumps. This here, this area here, is all in this lower uh, quarter of uh, the lightning distribution. And this here is the blue in the background. I want to keep the background stable, so I just click into the middle here. And let's do a second click here to fix this a bit better. Now I pull this up here. You see, well, with, with a little bit uh, tweaking and so on, we can get uh, a reasonable result. So let's look at some details. I press 1 for 100% and you see here some problems. This here, the hair here, uh, that was bright. It looks terrible now. And uh, some of these shadows look terrible. And the border here, this is not quite the right approach. So let's undo this here. Control Z and we have the, uh, our original state. If you remember, um, I have tackled the opposite problem, uh, the problem of uh, not enough contrast in an image and not enough oomph uh, with uh, doubling the layer and uh, putting the doubled layer, the second layer, in overlay mode. Let's do that here, and you see it works here too, increases the contrast. And now let's uh, try something. I want to decrease the contrast, and now I just invert the colors. And you see here, this works. This is a little bit dimmer and this is a little bit brighter. And I can just double the effect by uh, doubling uh, the layer here. Uh, but you see, the colors are off now. Everything uh, turns into a gray. So what can we do without, uh, what can we change uh, just to keep the color information in there but to reduce the contrast. Again, the solution is easy. We need not a layer in color, but a layer in monochrome. So I change uh, the layer. Uh, sorry, colors. I go to desaturate, just lightness. And here we are. I now have, let me switch back to normal. I have here, uh, looks like a negative, a film negative. I have a negative monochrome image of uh, the whole scene. This here is nearly white, this is darker, this white here is uh, nearly black. And setting this to overlay gives, uh, well, it reduces uh, the, the brightness and the bright parts and 
it uh, enhance the dark parts and so I get this image here. Let me switch this off and on. Okay, I can uh, double this layer and now you see here some features. Uh, this can be the right thing. I think it's it's a little bit uh, uh, too too harsh. Um, I would reduce now here the opacity of uh, the uh, the layer and uh, look for well look for a point where uh, it looks convincing. You see here now uh, the hairs here they look realistic and not so blown out as we had them. I think the face has to be a little bit or the, the skin has to be in the, in the shadow because uh, when you look at the image sorry so if you look at the image uh, you see here uh, it is definitely in the shadow. I think this looks quite right, but um, perhaps uh, the the face should be a little bit brighter, but uh, this here should uh, keep the same, should stay the same. So I make another layer with transparency and I set this layer also to overlay. And now I zoom into the face. And I use a paintbrush, set uh, this here to black and white, and take white as my color. Now I'm looking for a fuzzy circle. Well, this is okay. And this is this is also okay, but I want a low opacity let's say 30% or 25%. And now I can just paint on the face a bit. Somehow my uh, my tablet doesn't work just now, so I'm stuck with the mouse. This is not the best work I could do here, can do here. Um, think this is quite right. Perhaps a little bit overdone. Um, this can be uh, uh, regulated here with the slider and you can play with, uh, with these settings here. Just to recap this. Uh, if you have an, uh, an image which uh, has parts underexposed and perhaps parts overexposed, you can reduce overall contrast in a convincing way with uh, first doubling the layer, switch it uh, to black and white with uh, desaturation and inverting it and then setting the layer mode to overlay. If you are not content with uh, this effect. If it's not enough, just double this layer again. And then you can uh, reuse or uh, change uh, the, the effect with the opacity slider. You can even uh, do it again and again and again to get very funny uh, effects here. So let me uh, just kill these layers. So, and this was uh, set to about 70 or so for convin convincing effect. Yes, I think this is right. And then you can uh, manipulate details by adding a next layer, a transparent layer, setting it also to overlay, and then painting in white where you want to have stuff brighter or painting in black 
where you want to have stuff darker. So I could uh, paint in black over here to get this a bit darker. Or I can paint, I have white on, yes, I can, I can paint in white here to get uh, this effect uh, from the face a little bit more convincing. This looks a bit like uh, there was a bit light from from the side here, perhaps a re reflector or flash or so. So, sorry, my tablet isn't working just now. If you are really into photo manipulation or into graphics programs, get a tablet. It's uh, so much easier to work with that, so much more intuitive. Um, you work like with a pen. But, uh, well, somehow I deconfigured my X server and it doesn't work just now. So, um, let's look not too uh, exactly into this area, but I think for a, a snapshot this works well. Um, I tried to, um, to, well, to, to, to iron out some other errors here and this uh, is rotation. This image is rotated. It's not straight. And um, but uh, if <laughs> if I get it straight, it doesn't. It does look really boring. This uh, slightly tilted image um, it has something with the lines running the way they do. This uh, fire extinguisher hanging here and in, in the edge, and so uh, this works very good the way it is. And so I think this image is finished, except for the little bit crude uh, dodge, dodging here in the dodge and burn layer, but uh, that can be uh, handled better with the tablet. Let me add some thoughts to episode 50. I had made a comic out of a portrait and well, this isn't really convincing. In the meantime, I found out why it isn't really convincing. There is too much detail in it. So there are ways to to go um, to make this like a real comic, and they involve uh, well, really painting, selecting shapes and painting. I'll cover that, I'll try that and cover that and make, uh, I think, out of this image a real comic image with uh, all the features a comic should have. Going a little bit further back, in episode 49 I made a hat for you to throw some money into it. And I'm happy to say that uh, <laughs> this worked. I have uh, got enough money to uh, keep all the costs covered, uh, I think up to mid-November uh, or so. And uh, this, this stuff costs about uh, one dollar a day, one US dollar a day, and uh, 20 euro a month. And if you, if you want to help me, uh, just add some money into the hat. I'll ask for donations uh, uh, until the hat is filled uh, up to the uh, to the end of the year, and uh, then perhaps for Christmas I'll ask again. I think this was it for this week. Please write me some questions for the uh, free festival in Chakovec, and uh, if you have comments. Just write them at uh, the entry, it's a show entry in uh, meetthegimp.org or uh, send me a comment to info at meetthegimp.org. In the show notes to this show, you'll find uh, the link uh, to the digital darkroom here, Linux darkroom, and uh, to uh, the image I've used for this uh, show. and. I think uh, a link <laughs> to the pot where you can throw money in. The next show will be made in Croatia and uh, I think uh, I'll uh, edit it there and uh, put it online.
have to see him on Saturday. So uh, the next show will be out in a little bit different time schedule as usual. But I hope to see you around then or next Tuesday. Goodbye. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com.